maybe this is a, actually a good time to bring up um, your ayahuasca journey. I've never done ayahuasca, um, but I'm curious about it. I'm also curious about ibogaine, iboga. Um, but you told me that you did ayahuasca and that for you, it wasn't the dark, scary ride that it is for everybody else. Yeah, it was an incredible experience for me. Uh, I did it twice, actually. And have you done high dose psilocybin? Never, no. I just did yeah. small dose psilocybin a couple of times. Yeah. So I was, you know, nervous about it. I was very yeah, was understandably scared. so. I've done high dose psilocybin. It's terrifying, but I've always gotten something very useful out of it. So I mean, I was nervous about like whatever demons might hide in the shadow in the Jungian shadow. Like I was, I was nervous. But yeah, I think it turns out I don't know what the lesson is to draw from that, but my experience be born was, Russian. It must it must be the Russian thing. I mean, there's also something to the jungle. There it strips away all the bullshit of life and you're just there. I, I forgot the outside civilization exists. I forgot time because like when you don't have your phone, you don't have meetings or calls or whatever, you you lose the sense of time. The sun comes up, the sun comes down. That's the the fundamental biological timer. You know, every mammalian species has a short wavelength. So you think like blue UV type, but like absorbing cone and a longer wavelength absorbing cone. And the, and it does this interesting subtraction to designate when it's morning and evening, because when the sun is low in the sky, you've got short wavelength and long wavelength light. Like when you look at a sunrise, it's got blues and yellows, orange and yellows. You look in the evening, reds, orange and, and blues. And in the middle of the day, it's uh, like full spectrum light. Now it's always full spectrum light, but because of some atmospheric elements and because of the low solar angle, you like th that difference between the the different wavelengths of light is is the fundamental signal that the neurons in your eye pay attention to and, and signal to your circadian timekeeping mechanism. Like we are at the core of our brain and the suprachiasmatic nucleus, we are we are like wired to be entrained to the rising and setting of the sun. Mm -hmm. Like that's the biological timer, which makes perfect sense because, you know, obviously as the planets, um, as the planets spin and revolve. I also wonder like how that is affected by, you know, in the rainforest, the sun is not visible often. So you're uh, under the cover of, of right. the trees. So maybe that affects. Well, there are the social rhythms, there are feeding rhythms. Sometimes in, in terms of some species will signal the timing of activity of other species and, um, but yeah, getting out from the canopy is is critical. Of course, even under the canopy during the daytime, there's far more photons than at night. You know, this is always when I'm telling people to get sunlight in their eyes in the morning and in the evening. People say, there's no light, no sunlight this time of year. I'm like, it, go outside on a really overcast day. It's far brighter than it is at night, right? So um, there's still lots of sunlight, even if you can't see the sun as an object. But I, I love um, time perception shifts. And you mentioned that in the jungle, it's linked to the rising and setting of the sun. You also mentioned that on ayahuasca, you zoomed out from, from the earth. Mm -hmm. these, these are like, to me, the most interesting aspects of having a human brain as opposed to another brain. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've only ever had a human brain, but which is that you can consciously set your t uh, time domain window. Like you can, we can be focused here, or we can be focused on all of Austin, or we can be focused on the entire planet. You can make those choices consciously. But in the time domain, it's it's hard. Like different activities bring us into fine slicing or more or more broad binning of time, depending on what we're doing, programming or exercising or researching or podcasting. But um, just how unbelievably um, fluid the human brain is in terms of its uh, the aperture of of the time space window of our cognition and of our experience. And I I feel like this is perhaps one of the more valuable tools that we have access to that we don't really leverage as much as we should, which is when things are really hard, you need to zoom out and see it as one element within your whole lifespan and that there's more to come. Um, you know, I mean, people commit suicide because they can't see beyond the time domain they're in, or they think it's going to go on forever. Um, when we're happy, we, we rarely think this is going to last forever, but, uh, which is an interesting contrast in its own right. But I think that psychedelics, while I have very little experience with them, I, ha I have some, and, and it sounds like they're just a very interesting window into the the different apertures. Well, how to surf that wave is probably a skill. One of the things I was prepared for, and I think is important, is not to resist. Mm. I think 
I understand what it means to resist a thing, a powerful wave, and it's not going to be good. So you have to be able to surf it. So I was ready for that, to relax through it. And maybe because I'm quite good at that from knowing how to relax in all kinds of disciplines, p playing piano and uh, guitar when I was super young, and then through jujitsu, knowing the value of relaxation and through all kinds of sports, so to be able to relax the body fully and just accept whatever happens to you. That process is probably why it was a very positive experience for me. Do, do you have any interest in Iboga? I'm very interested in Ibogaine Iboga. There's a colleague of mine and researcher at Stanford, Nolan Williams, who's been doing some transcranial magnetic stimulation and brain imaging on people who have taken uh, Ibogaine. Ibogaine, um, as I understand it, gives a 22 hour psychedelic journey where no hallucinations with eyes open, but you close your eyes and you get a, um, a very high resolution image of actual events that happened in your life, but then you have agency within those movies. I think you have to be um, of healthy heart to be able to do it. I think you have to be on a heart rate monitor. It's not trivial. It's not like these other psychedelics. Um, but there's a wonderful group um, called Veteran Solutions um, that has used Iboga combined with um, some other psychedelics um, in the veterans community to to great success for things like PTSD. And it's a group I've, I've really tried to support in, in any way that I can, mainly by being vocal about the great work they're doing. But um, you hear incredible stories of people who are just like, like near cratered in their life or zombied by PTSD and other things post-war, um, get back a lightness or achieve a lightness and a clarity. Um, that they didn't feel they had. So I'm very curious about these compounds. Um, the state of Kentucky, we should check this, but um, I believe has taken money from the uh, opioid crisis settlement for Ibogaine research. I mean, so this is like no longer, yes, yeah, so if you look here, let's see, uh, did they do it? Oh no. no, oh no, they backed away. Kentucky backs away from the plan to fund opioid treatment uh, research. With they were going money. to use the money to treat opioid. Now officials are backing off 50 billion, what? is on its way over the coming years. $50 billion. $50 billion is on its way to state and local government over the coming years. The pool of funding comes from multiple legal statements with pharmaceutical companies that profited from manufacturing or selling opioid painkillers. Kentucky has some of the highest number of deaths from the opioid. So they were going to do psychedelic research with Ibogaine, supporting research on illegal, illegal folks, psychedelic drug called Ibogaine. Well, I guess they backed away from it. Well. Sooner or later, we'll get some happy news up on the, on the internet during this episode. <laughs> I don't um, talk about the, the, sh the, sh the shark and the crocodile fighting. For, yeah, yeah, that's that true. That's true. And you survived the jungle. Well, that's the the thing. I was I was I was writing to you on WhatsApp multiple times because I was going to put it on the internet. Are you okay? And if you're like alive, and then I was going to just like put it to Twitter, just like he's alive. <laughs> but then of course you're far too classy for that, so you just came back alive. <laughs> 